What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the 1894. I'm Darren Amos. Back with me again for the Swindon review. It was 4 1, nice and easy. Let's get into it. Right, Amos, we usually cut in between us. So I said, let's get into it, but we're just going for it. Swindon, it was day. I, I enjoyed it. That was a nice little fun match. It had good commentators for once. And mm. Just, you know, it was a nice little, nice little FA Cup game under the lights. What do you think, bro? Yeah, for those who had to endure the BT Sport on New Year's Day, Steve McManaman mm-hmm. absolute going on with himself and Jake Humphries, etc. It was nice to have a bit of respite from that. And it was a nice Friday night game. It was enjoyable. You know, you could tell the crowd were up for it. And, and City started really well in four goals. You can't really complain about that. Yeah, uh, just one man we have to talk about straight away. It's Carl Palmer. He was absolutely magic. I've not like he's just pure head down, run at people, footballer, cuts in. He's afraid of his white uh, white rifle. He's afraid of his wife, <laughs> foot, unfortunately. But that can be worked on. I thought it was fantastic. And for the first goal as well, I thought it was unreal. I'm such a think what do you think of his performance at all? <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite sure he's got a wife just yet. But uh, <laughs> he does he does he, he looks like he plays football as if he's on a park, as if he's on, on one of those sort of, like concrete football nets and he, he receives the ball and his first thought is just to take someone on, which <laughs> City don't really have that, you know, we, we get a, a, a bit of a stick because, you know, a lot of it is robot, a robotic passing and we saw a lot of that tonight, to be fair, passing mm-hmm. teams to death, that's how City play, but when he gets on the ball, there is that little bit of excitement and that little bit of energy that just, you could tell the defenders, even though they were League 2 defenders and granted, you know, probably not coming up against that quality again this season, he does it, to, he has done it to Premier League defenders, he's done it to Champions League defenders and mm-hmm. tonight he was just superb. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's just a running team. Him. I think when he gets <clears throat> fully ingrained, I say fully ingrained, probably is because of that, but when he is like the folding level, always playing week in, week out, he will be, like I, I've talked to Death about how Raheem Sterling's change-up is, is the way he plays. He'll be like that. He'll learn to mm-hmm. keep ball retention a lot. Uh, he'll be able to retain the ball a lot more and I think he's only going to become a better player. Like this is like the lowest tier of Palmer we'll ever see. Like he's only going to get better and better and better as the time goes on. But we had a bit of a had a bit of a surprise when we saw the team sheet and we saw four hundred. I think uh, Sam Matafay said it was four hundred and seventy international caps. Yeah, and it was just it was a it was a big shock. I would have liked to see uh, Keiki and and Bethe maybe get some more time. Yeah. And McAtee definitely should have started. I liked how we took him for the team near the end. But in the little twenty minute cameos, if he even they got, what did you think of all the the perform all the youth performances? Yeah, I, I thought McAtee at a minimum was was what I'd expect him and, and would have wanted. I was a little bit disappointed, but look for how how long have big teams been said that they, they don't take the FA Cup seriously, and you can't begrudge a manager or a team for sticking out the strongest eleven, even if there are seven COVID cases. You know, City wants to win trophies. Guardiola is not going to be here forever. He understands that these are opportunities to to win silverware that have to be taken. But in terms of the the two or three youngsters that came on. I thought McAtee looked, he looked exceptional again. He's, his touches are incredible. He's got a little bit of bite about him, like a little, like a puppy when he's going after that ball. He seems just to get to it first before anyone else. And the other two that came on, uh, it, it was good. There, there was not really much to, to sort of uh, judge them off. I think Kaiki had a little bit of a dribble and could have possibly released the ball a bit early. I think those who've watched him in the EDS have said that he, he just holds on to the ball maybe a second too much, so that's something to watch out for. But all in all, good run out for those players who weren't in form, uh, seeing the or not, and, and good run out for those players, youth team as well. Exactly. It's it's just it's kind of it's just a perfect night. You know, I mean, we've got true. We've got minutes back into people like Walker. We've got minutes into the EDS that you know, they're getting this taste of, like, they're getting this taste of professional football. Like, these are, mm. are I don't know what, what to say. This is a league, too. It's a very, it's a very tough league. You're playing against players yeah. who are tough, born and bred. Like, they will... We'll uh, kick you about when we saw yeah, that. Exactly, day, yeah. We? yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it was, um, like, Sven, Sven were a very good team. I said on Twitter, they pressed better than Man United. I thought the press was yeah. brilliant. But... They and the young the youngsters obviously can't answer that straight away. Like it just shows they're very, very good footballers. But we said about the team, we'll go through the ratings now. I have them here beside us. We've given Stefan a six, unfortunately. Now it was just I think it would have been a seven had it not been for the goal. He really should have kept better. And then the whole defence gets a seven. I won't go through individually. You can see beside it. Amos, the ratings. What do you yeah. think of the first? It's just a defence. 
Yeah, so Zach Steffen, I, I'm, I'm a massive Zach Steffen fan. I think he's incredible. He, he's mm -hmm. he's a superb footballer and, and he will continue to be that throughout his career. But I reckon for my money, it's probably his worst game in a City shirt. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't say a lot because granted, you know, he's not had the, the most opportunities. A bit saying that, he's played a Premier League game way to Chelsea and, and kept a clean sheet. But there were just moments, I don't know whether or not it's the surroundings or the pitch. There were just little bits of his passing, which is usually nice and crisp. It looks as if we were sort of rewinding in four or five years ago we had Claudio Bravo between the sticks it just felt a little bit unassured and you know we, we couldn't become accustomed to seeing the best in the world do it in Edison so I'm not surprised when someone comes in his place it, it doesn't look the same but other than that across the back four I think it was as solid as it could have been could the goal have been prevented probably but was it a decent enough finish to warrant the celebration I think probably yeah as well so I think everyone will be happy about that Swindon fans included yeah, like this. Um, I think I think it's McCurdy. It's either McCurdy or McCurdy, right? Whatever it is, he just scored against the, the current best defense in England, and you know the, the celebration show that time. It was a, it was a fantastic finish. Me and Joe, uh, we, were, we were sat in the car for the whole thing, comparing him to Cal the Dragon because he looked like Cal the Dragon. <laughs> yeah, he did. So when he when he scored it, you know, there was that bit where like. We'll let, we'll let him off, but that, that's, a, that's yeah. a, good, a good finish. You know, he's gone for scoring against Bin FC to scoring against FC. <laughs> it was, it, it was a real, uh, like, even the crowd, the crowd are up to Australia. It was a really, really nice moment. And I know we scored after, but mm. that was just, that, after seeing, after going there, watching the level of football and then seeing the team scoring, it, it, has, yeah. it has to be good. As someone, as someone like myself who goes to Shamrock Rovers match, I know uh, Hugh goes to the Bohemians matches. If he, if, if that happened, we'd be the same. We'd be going mad, yeah. right? Yeah. Then into the midfield, a bit, a bit better than sevens this time. Roger gets a seven. He got a silly enough booking. He just kind of barged him over. I think it was just... Very Fernandinho-esque, wasn't it? It was yeah, he yeah. Been lessons off him. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Then the two boys in front from Gundogan and the Bruyne. A goal a goal for Gundogan and assist for the Bruyne. Both getting a... I thought the Bruyne... You know, if you, I, I'm not going to... I'm not going to go back. I've already told you. It's the same criticisms over and over again. It's crosses hitting the first man. But... We have the video coming out soon enough. You'll see in it we talk about his close pass and his close play. That the one assist he got was a quick five yard little pass, mm. and it was fantastic. Right? I don't know if it bubbled up and hit him that way. I hope it didn't. I hope it was it was meaningful because the assist was great because the way it hit off the back of his heel, it went perfect into Jesus's feet, and he finished it off. Gundogan, that that free kick was unreal. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like, that was that was such a nice little free kick. I did. He just he had to put a one place. Yeah, and he got it. Place. What did you think in the midfield? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I don't think anyone expected a Rodri Gundwan De Bruyne midfield that caught everyone out. I think uh, maybe COVID p uh, played a part in that. But yeah. Rodri, uh, he, he's probably City's most important player this season, yeah. and um, I think he was solid enough again granted there wasn't a lot to do as we've said before but you know seven pretty much sums up would have been much higher if that uh that cracking effort went in at, at oh, the end but that, that absolute star i don't know how the keepers saved that to be honest yeah. but uh gundawan again i think he, he he's his incisive passing is superb and that free kick uh it reminded me a bit of i think it was joe bryan for fulham in the uh champion Championship playoff final a couple of seasons ago yeah. where he just yeah. just catches the goalkeeper off and like you say just couldn't have put it in any other place and, and it was the only place he could have put it and De Bruyne I've been critical of him in the last few weeks since he's come back I think he's always always can do much better because we've seen that before and tonight was probably one of those games where he maybe wasn't at, at sort of like 100 percent be interesting next week against Chelsea I don't think we'll see that sort of lethargy around the pitch it, it felt like he could have had a little bit more of a snap to him but that pass was was as, as De Bruyne as you're going to get wasn't it? in fact no it's probably what David Silver asked the way he just sort of gently slips it through so yeah that that's nice to see that he's still got it we can all rest rest easy tonight yeah, definitely. I think again, like we say, we're gonna, you're going to see the video. It's a long video. You're going to see the video. He's playing when he plays that further up. The higher, like the likelihood of him getting assists goes up because he's not just punting them into the box. That sweet little pass through. That's all you ask of him. That's why. That's what he's going to do. With that this is me. You'll, you'll hear more about it. Right? Get getting on. We'll move, for, move forward a bit. We'll leave the man in the match for last. Hey, just gets a seven. Might have scored. Yeah, but he also took the worst penalty I've ever seen. I've it was ever horrendous. Seen. What was it you compared him to? What was it you compared him to? 
Oh, what, what, oh, it was like when you're in the park and he, he does a one-step shot. It's like he wasn't allowed to do a run-up. It was, it was just like a one-step one shot. And, oh, my God. It was just awful. It was really bad. And to be honest, credit to keeper. He stayed up long enough. And I think with, yeah. with that sort of style of penalty, you're waiting for the keeper to go down and slot in it the opposite way. But he was left in no man's land and he had to pick a side. But if it looks so slow in real time, I, I reckon I could have probably saved it, to be fair. Yeah, uh, we we said as soon as I saw the one, I was like, nah, he's missing this, he is missing this." And I had um, it, it was funny because I had something typed out before for the tweet, and I had to go back. I had to go back. <laughs> to it, like, but that was a free kick. Everyone thought yeah. it was a free kick. And uh, then Bernardo gets an eight. He got a goal. He could have had about seven. Mm. And then Palmer, <laughs> had, uh, he's just he's he's easily yeah. he, he was absolutely fantastic. So go on, give, before we wrap it up, what do you think of the the front three ratings was? Bang on. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Bernardo Silva, it's a good job there wasn't much on the line tonight other than progression into the next round and we got those four goals because DM me, that's some of the most wasteful finishing I've, I've seen. Yeah. And it's somebody who usually only has one or two shots a game and, and this season anyway has scored them, but it, it felt like it was it was a Wilfred Boney sort of performance, the chances he was getting. It was the one where he absolutely skewed it over the bar for about six yards out. That, that, I had my head in my hands at that. I think it was 2 0 at the point anyway. But, uh... I know he tried to even know his head. The keeper to chance his head. Yeah, Jesus was, was good enough. Uh, yeah. night, it, it's nice seeing him on that side, and he's not sort of con, sort of constricted to that down the middle where he, he gets isolated a bit and, and sort of gets dragged out looking for things to get involved in. So when he has his own side, when he's sort of given the license on on either the left or right wherever he's playing, he looks much more assured. And again, a nice, a good finish. Not necessarily something we, we've sort of associated Jesus with that sort of composure in the box. So it's nice to see that. But oh, I'm gonna have nightmares about that penalty. It was just horrendous. Yeah, it's it's one of the worst I've ever seen. But look, we've gotten through. Actually, before I wrap it up, I do have to say you are one hundred percent in your score prediction. You did say four one. We realised that. He said four one. He's here one week and he got it right. So. It goes down for me. It only goes down for me. <laughs> what, can we, what can we say? We have a, we have a football genius on our hands. Yeah, that would be that. Anyway. What's it? Not David Moyes, not quite that level of football <laughs> David genius. Moyes, yeah. David Moyes is a football genius. That'll be that, right? We'll wrap that one up there. Thanks so much for watching. We we really appreciate it. We're gonna have uh, a few more videos. We're gonna have a few more videos this week in the lead up to Chelsea, so you won't be missing us anyway. So go on, we'll see you after. Thanks very much for watching again.